As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. This episode is sponsored by State Farm. Choices are great. Like with your podcasts, you get to choose what you want to listen to. And State Farm believes insurance should work the same way. That's why the State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you get the coverage you want at an affordable price and a policy that helps cover what you value most. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm Personal Price Plan. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, PodMN, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once and always for joining me today with the Minnesota Vikings actually getting a win against the Seattle Seahawks for the first time since 2009. Minnesota wins. 30-17 30-17 to 17 over the Seahawks in U.S. Bank Stadium. Definitely a great pleasure to finally get things in the right direction here, at least kind of, sort of. Vikings are not 1-2, and two, and once again, this thing is stuck in the past. I thought I had it. There we go. <laughs> I apologize. All kinds of crazy scores and fun things to talk about in segment number two, but we're going to talk about some fun stuff in segment number one as well. Uh, no Delvin Cook in today's game, which meant more of an aerial attack. But that didn't mean Alexander Madison wouldn't join the party because he really joined the party today. He really did. But Kirk Cousins, 38 attempts, 30 completions, 323 yards, 3 touchdowns. He was exquisite throughout the game today. The play calling was fairly creative for the most part. It it just worked. Uh, And the Seattle defense really kind of isn't what it used to be in the past. Uh, Sometimes they look good, but generally speaking, the Legion of Boom is definitely no more. And none of those players from back then, when they were winning the Super Bowl and getting to the Super Bowl and getting to you know, playoff runs and beating us because Blair Walsh couldn't make the kick and stuff. Um, A lot of those guys are gone, which I'm happy. I don't miss any of them at all. Uh, Still a a very decent defensive line in Seattle. And the Vikings offensive line, excellent in today's game, similar to last week. Really appreciate what was accomplished, generally speaking, in that case. Kirk Cousins only sacked once in today's game. That's freaking awesome. Completion percentage about 79%. Quarterback rating of 128.4. No turnovers in today's game at all. Zero turnovers by the Minnesota Vikings in today's game. In fact, there were no turnovers whatsoever. Vikings thought uh, Bashad Breeland had knocked the ball out of uh, Gerald Everett's hands. But unfortunately for... <laughs> Unfortunately for Mr. Uh, Bashar Breeland, who had another rough game. Yep, he had another rough game today. It's like, yep, he gave up the catch. Oh, but he forced the turnover. He forced the turnover. You know, he gave up the catch. He's going to get a million tackles because they're going to keep catching the ball against him, him being Bashar Breeland. But then, oh, hey, he forced a fumble. No, his knee was down. It was totally down, and it's like, of course, it wasn't the wrong call. It was the right call. It was it's just, you know, it is what it is. Luckily, the Minnesota, or luckily, Minnesota Vikings would continue to shut out the Seattle Seahawks in the second half. Extremely impressive overall performance. Russell Wilson, there was some moments where it's like, just get him down. Just, just get him down. Just, just get him down. Please, just get him down. And luckily, it wasn't that bad. Only a four, only a four yard long for Russell Wilson today compared to the past when it would be a, probably a 38 yard run. 23-yard run. He's definitely older. He's definitely not quite the same as he was, per se, in his mobility, even though he's a lot more mobile than most of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Still to this day, he's a lot more mobile than most quarterbacks the Vikings have had, you know, in since uh, uh, Culpepper, I guess, or Tavares Jackson or something like that. Uh, he was he's more, more mobile than uh, Teddy Bridgewater, this and that, even though Bridgewater was a little bit mobile. Uh, Cousins... Showing a little tiny bit of mobility for a second, but uh, not really. Only two yards rushing in the game today. 
uh, play calling would get conservative sometimes in the red zone and it frustrate the crap out of you. It's like you're trying to smash in through the middle over and over again and it's like just not leading to a whole lot. So we'd have to settle for a 20-yard field goal late in the game when we wanted to put Seattle on ice, but luckily didn't matter. And of course, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Greg Joseph, 3 of 3 in today in today's game. 3 of 3, 43 yard long, a 34 yard or 20 yarder in the game, but he made everything. He didn't botch anything. Uh, the holes were correct and all that. And, and Sheesh Berry was awesome. Jordan Berry was absolutely awesome in today's game. Touchback into the, oh no, no touchbacks and into the 20 at the end of the game. Smiles, just absolutely burying Seattle on the one yard line. Gotta love that. A little bit of luck, but at the same time, it is what it is. I mean, it still was great placement. Jordan Berry's been absolutely fantastic with Minnesota so far. No touchbacks on the season, knock on wood. And, um, yeah, generally speaking, only two punts. Vikings offense was freaking awesome throughout the day. Seattle's offense looked awesome early, and it was scary, and I thought, oh, well, I'm going to be right when uh, you would bet the over on the 54 total line out there. No, nope, 47. If you bet the under, you win. And, Joey, guess what? You lost. You lost Joey because Vikings defense was better in the second half. And Seattle unable to complete some key passes. Thank God, Russell Wilson unable to get loose. Uh, he was trying to. He, he would either have to throw the ball away or the pass just simply not caught on some of those uh, deep attempts. One there could have been one late in the game where Seattle could have been back in it, which was scary. A very scary moment for myself and others because we know how Seattle. And Russell Wilson and those Hail Mary plays and all the crying and happiness and we're happy for him and all that. Luckily the ball to Penny Hart was uh, well was not caught but also luckily Harrison Smith was not called for a defensive pass interference. I was afraid that could have happened but it wasn't called thankfully. It could have happened as he went for I thought he went for Penny Hart more than he went for the ball and then he almost magically got the interception as well him being Harrison Smith but uh, it would have been better because obviously Seattle was, obviously it was going to be a loss of downs, or Minnesota gets the ball at the 25. I'll take the loss of downs at like the 40. Thank you very much. That's a little better. So uh, luckily, that was a, a turning point in the game. Generally speaking, of course, Bashad Breeland led all cornerbacks in tackles. Here's uh, Everson Griffin, part of me, back getting the sack. It was the first sack of the game. Eric Hendricks also getting a sack when it looked like Seattle was going to keep rolling through us. Nick Vigil, another very solid game today. Really appreciate what he's brought. Uh, strange situation. Hopefully it's still there. Yes, it is still there. It's actually been deleted, but my screen has not been refreshed. Cam Dantzler after the game, because he was kind of in and out, in and out in um, the game with playing time. And you can kind of tell, read between the lines. It doesn't take a whole lot of intelligence to figure out what he's talking about here. I'm tired of biting my tongue about this whole situation. FR, which means for real, I guess. I, that's nice. Just say for real. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon it'll be just I-T-O-B-M-T. I'm tired of biting my tongue. Yeah, just rolls right off your tongue. Yeah, well, it rolls right off your tongue. Yeah, <clears throat> anyhow, but uh, we know what he's talking about. Him versus Bashad Breeland being in the the cornerback position. So far, danzler has been the better player, but uh, you know this is a lot of feeling as to why um, Phil Mackey mentioned this on Venn Line, which is still going right now at the time I'm recording segment number one. Um, but and I'm getting distracted looking in the background here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he just mentioned it's this guy's lack of maturity that's probably been hurting him in a lot of ways as well. Uh, yep, yeah, he's not a very mature guy. And of course, last year when he did have major time out there, uh, tons and tons of snaps, he had some gaffes. He was the best rookie cornerback, generally speaking, but he had, he'd have some gaffes. Harrison Hand wasn't getting a whole lot of time because he's a later pick, and he was like, you know, not his usual prospect. And Jeff Gladney was, you know, he was kind of coming back still from a knee injury. And he's okay. You know, Jeff Gladney was just okay. He was just okay, but hopefully there were signs that he was going to get better and better. He never got absolutely roasted where Danster could get roasted. Dancer can make the big play, and he could get roasted as well. That's the one fear with him. Where Bashar Breeland's just, he's, he's starting to remind me of Trey Waynes when Trey Waynes wasn't good. Or we could go with Josh Robinson, or whatever. That was the other cornerback I was talking about last week with the uh, three deadly sins versus the Seattle Seahawks uh, in 2015, 2015 season, but January 2016. Um, Kirk Cousins looking like Kirk Tober. How he has these great months of October coming up. 
Hopefully you can maintain that in October, but I'd rather see Kirk annuary instead because regular season games aren't played in January. You know, I mean, usually, well, they might this year. I, I, yeah, but regard, yeah, I think we get one. But let's see Kirk annuary, huh? Let's see some magic in Kirk February. Yeah, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Brewery. Yeah, it doesn't sound that good, but regardless, just let's let's see some real magic when it really matters at the end of the day. Making the playoffs is nice. It's good. You got to make the playoffs to win the Super Bowl, but let's actually do something magical. I'd love it. Cam Dancer is tired of biting his tongue about the whole situation. Well, you didn't bite it, dude. You just, uh, you didn't bite it. You basically said, that would be like me saying, I'm not, I'm tired of biting my tongue about this frickin' vaccine situation at work. I'm tired, yeah, well, yeah, I think I, I think I didn't bite my tongue there. Yeah, and I didn't, did I? Yeah, I just did the same thing Cam Danster did, but you get the idea. It's an example, but at the same time. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm tired of talking. I just don't want to hear about it anymore. Just leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> during the game, that was, whoa, Sebastian Barton, Black Space. Oh, yeah, he did tweet me. This is like brand new, hot off the press here, and I'll probably read it again later. Kirk Cousins and Matt Castle. He's comparing the two here. Win percentage by Kirk Cousins is literally, according here, less than, let's see, half of a percent difference with Kirk Cousins versus Matt Castle. Half of a percent difference. Um, basically, and yeah, he says one win changes nothing. Vikings, Kirk Cousins. Whoa, he's tweeting myself, Kirk Cousins, and the Vikings. Hashtag Fire Zimmer. Hashtag get Kirk out. Hashtag fire Spielman. I don't completely disagree with that, to be quite honest. Uh, we'll see if Kirk Cousins can do it when it really, truly matters. It'd be nice if he could. I don't hate Kirk Cousins, and I don't want to bash him on a day when he's clearly he was clearly the star player out there, even though you could say Madison was as well. Uh, still, it was an entertaining football game. The last few, and it's just another one of those weird seasons where you chalk it up to... If you guys could execute a little better in the big moments, your kicker's a little more clutch, but also you hang on to the ball in the big moments as well. You make the big first down. You get a stop on third down or fourth down. You know, because you can't just you can't just say, Greg Joseph effed us. And you can't just say, Delvin Cook effed us against the uh, Cincinnati Bungles. You can't say that. It, it, one play, those plays were bullcrap and they killed us, but so did other plays along the way. Make a bleep and tackle on 4th and 13 or something like that, or 3rd and 19 or 3rd and 15. Make a bleep and tackle. Get the stop. Get the stop on 4th and 3rd. Get the stop on 4th and inches. Get the stop on 4th and inches. I know it's easier said than done, but get the damn stop because teams can do that. Good teams do that. That's why they're the ones with the rings and we're the ones without the rings because you don't make the big plays during the course of the game. San Fran, Sicko. I think it's, nope, it's Green Bay. That figures. Rematch of the uh, multiple NFC Championship games here, flashing in the background. That's what I keep turning in my head here. Yeah, Mason Crosby nailing it barely. Wow, he grazed that ball grazed the upright from. I'm not. I don't think it was even that far out. But well, Crosby's a fantastic kicker. He just has his weird moments, just like every kicker. Um, rematch of multiple NFC title games: Green Bay versus San Francisco. Flashing in the background, Sunday Night Football, because, of course, this is another late game. Thank God, three straight Nooners leading into the bye. Ah, thank you, Lord. Three straight Nooners leading into the bye. That makes Purple Mafia host, 14-year veteran now, Purple Mafia host, smile. Sure does. Yeah, and boy, Justin Fields was uh, had, a sim had similar numbers this week compared to last, and he had to start this week. Mm. Mm. Well, let's get back to that much later. Well, I was, I was right about a few things. It would be more of an aerial battle, but I was also correct in generally speaking that you can run the football against the Seahawks team. I mean, it's plain as day. I mean, Henry had a billion yards last week. What was it, 180 or something? He had like 260 total yards. Alexander Madison had 169 total yards on the game today. Fantastic. Did not get in the end zone, so sorry, fantasy ballers. You probably scooped him up, which was a smart move against this porous Seattle run defense. Their pass rush is pretty good, but the offensive line did a good job. Um, Vikings offensive line, that is. Um, Alexander Madison, 112 yards on the ground, four and a half yards a carry, 24 yard long, nothing nothing bursting, nothing explosive, but just good, very solid, good run blocking as well down the field. Guys like Ezra Cleveland and such with some nice blocks. 
down the field. And just generally speaking, the offensive line has been simply better the last couple of weeks, and that's good. If it continues, Kirk Cousins is going to have an awesome season, and we just might be able to do something this year. We just might be able to make the postseason and make some noise, which would be great. You have a good offensive line, good things can happen. Uh, K.J. Osborne, I was wrong about him getting to the century mark, but I was correct about Justin Jefferson getting to the century mark. Tyler Conklin, wow, what a nice performance. And remember, was it late last season? Or was it two years ago? That Tyler Conklin really started to emerge after just, he was Tyler, Tyler dropping. Like, he's dropping everything. It was terrible. He couldn't catch a cold, son of a biscuit. Or he couldn't catch the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, well, he couldn't catch the ball either. And it was annoying. And then all of a sudden, he could. And it was nice. Obviously, he's more of one of those quote-unquote blocking tight ends, so maybe he had stone fingers for a while. But he can catch the ball, and there's a little bit of athleticism. There's a little bit. He's not real fast. But 70 yards on seven catches. Seven catches. Kyle Rudolph apparently is a... I don't know. He's looking more and more like a fool with some of the stuff he's been saying lately. I don't know. And obviously leaving Kirk Cousins out and talking about he finally has an uh, uh, offensive... He has a head coach and not a off- uh, defensive coordinator. Um, he's been kind of leaving these subtle messages that are not subtle, just kind of like uh, Dantzler did on Twitter. It's like, we get it, dude, okay? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> some people are wondering that he was a little bit more of a jackass than we want to lead on. He was good off the field. He was the kindest guy ever, and he was giving, kind, and sweet, but... There's other things. I mean, there's more. There, there's other things. There just are. You know, just like Ryan Suter of the Minnesota Wild is a really nice guy off the ice. In the locker room, Octum, Octum, Heil Hitler. Yeah, <laughs> just, need I say more? <laughs> he wasn't exactly, he wasn't exactly the best teammate in the locker room and just generally speaking. But to, to regular, to, just to, to fans and all that, he was, he was a great guy. So they say. I'm bouncing all over the place. I'm a little weird, but... And I'm calm. I'm not ranting. I'm not pissed off. There's really nothing to get pissed off in this game other than Bashad Breeland sucks. He sucks at the end of the day. Uh, and it, it's, it, it's a damn shame. Uh, so, again, some of the play calling in the red zone got me a little irritated. It just got kind of repetitious. Okay, you run Amir Abdullah. It was a predictable play in the Seattle Seahawks. It was like a river... You know, it was like a river moving sideways, just running them down. And then CJ, and then you give the ball to CJ Ham, which is cool, cute, and everything on second and ten. And what happens? Well, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, now it's third and third and eighth. You know, woohoo! But yeah, third and goal, but third and third from the eighth yard line, that type of thing. And we ended up kicking a twenty yard field goal. At the end of the day, it didn't matter. But still, what if it did? That's what bugs me a little bit. It is what it is. I'm glad we didn't turn the ball over. I was just yelling, why not a fade? Why not a fade? Why are we kind of going for the same thing over and over again? Because I remember it went back to, I think it went back to Madison again after that. And it was like another nothing play. There was no fade. To, oh, no, it was to, it was a, it was like a, a lateral pass. It was like a lateral to, um, or a pitch or whatever to Adam Thielen, which got like a yard or something. It was like, well, no, it was like three or four yards with three Seattle Seahawks in front of him. Like, come on. Come on. I, I, I could understand a play like that to Alexander Madison. Like, his job is more to be able to break tackles, maybe be a little shifty. See, it's possible because Alexander Madison's really good with the catch and, like, you know, momentum and such. If he has, like, a little bit of space, he can make it move and maybe get a, get around a guy or two. You might have had a shot there. Obviously, Delvin Cook's pretty damn good at it. That's why he's considered one of the best uh, overall running backs in the league. But throwing the ball to a wide receiver with three guys in front of you, that's just, it's just like I'm just nitpicking about little stuff like that. Call me an armchair quarterback. I don't give a damn. You know, it's okay. You know, we don't have to agree on every little knick-knack of every little thing. Maybe you're nitpicking me a little bit <laughs> when I'm just kind of, I'm covering every aspect I can. Um, generally speaking, I mean, you got to have the positives and the negatives in every game. You do. And it's just little stuff like that's always bugged me, where you pass the ball to a, it's like a two-yard pass to a wide receiver with three white jerseys or whatever, you know, different jerseys in front of him, whatever the situation is. It's like, he's not going to break those tackles. It's, it's not going to happen unless he's like Percy Harvin and I don't know, even Percy Harvin was overrated. <laughs> Caught Condre, Condre Diggs, huh? Condre Diggs. Hmm, I don't care. 
I'm glad the Vikings beat the Seattle Seahawks finally again. Last time they beat the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson was in Wisconsin. Wisconsin Badgers, oof. Torturing us some more, by the way. Because it's not like the Gobers don't play the Badgers, do they? God, I hate the Badgers. I hate I hate not being able to bring the quarterback down when he gets a little bit of space. It just it just drives me nuts. Just, just bring him down, please. Oh, my God. It, just, it makes my head explode. So, actually, finally beating this guy today, it, it's a wonderful feeling. So, I might be in a little bit of a goofy mood, in a sense. <laughs> I mean, the Vikings have a tiebreaker over the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> the Vikings have a tiebreaker over the Seattle Seahawks. Wrap your head around that. The, it's crazy. So maybe we will make the playoffs. Maybe. Maybe. Um, it just felt really nice. It, it just did. Wonderful accuracy. I mean, Kirk Cousins has been absolutely fantastic most of the way. Uh, and there, he's different. His IQ is higher. than, it, And it seems like every year it gets a little bit better, a little bit better. i definitely been noticing that. And then he might have one of those awful games, this and that. But there's something, uh, he seems a little different this year. And I'm, I'm trying my best not to get overly optimistic, to bring everybody up for that big fall, like the old roller coaster deal. Uh, or the pendulum swings the other way, however weird scientific way you want to look at it. But uh, he's been absolutely fantastic thus far, and I appreciate everything he's done. You know, and, I'm, and I'm recognizing it. I'm recognizing it today for sure. Fran Tarkington Award is going to Kirk Cousins' strong, gold-plated honorable mention to Alexander Madison. Because in a lot of a lot of situations he would have gotten it. Justin Jefferson obviously fantastic again. At, a, at least one 28-yard play during the game. He did get in the end zone today. As did Conklin. As did Adam Thielen. Thielen gets a billion touchdowns. He's one of those kind of guys. He's like one of those. He's like that goal line threat. Why a running back in a lot of ways? Like back in the day in fantasy football that you'd love to have. Might not get the billion yards, but he'll get in the end zone over and over and over. And that's what Adam Thielen's become as a wide receiver with Justin Jefferson on the roster now versus Stefan Diggs. Uh, Thielen obviously got touchdowns before, but it just seems it's, 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 his role is a little different now. Uh, Jefferson's younger and super, super good to this and that, and Thielen's getting a little older, and he gets banged up. Um, amazing he got in the end zone 14 times last year, despite it felt like a kind of a disappointing season for Thielen when 14 touchdowns is 14 touchdowns. Um, obviously the defense, again, shutting down a dangerous Seattle offense, which they absolutely are in the second half. is pretty cool, too. Um, they actually punted the ball. Seattle actually punted the ball today, twice. Uh, they obviously turned the ball over on downs as, as well. It just felt like a million dollars. We kept Seattle out of the end zone. And their kicker, Jason Myers, missed one for the first time in 37 attempts today. That was pretty damn crazy. He made the 53-yarder early, and it's like, ah, oh, there it is, 37. And he's like way up there with the all-time greats in terms of uh, consecutive kicks made. And then he missed one from, was it like 49, if I remember correctly. And it was like, oh my God. And then he never got, he never attempted another field goal the rest of the game. Pretty crazy. Pretty wild and uh, nice overall game. Urban legend for today. Let's get back to that in a second. Hopefully I don't, I hope that, <laughs> I thought I had something. I'm not sure. Uh, well, yeah, I'll get back to that very shortly. The Christian Potter Memorial is going to be Richard Breland. Boy, he is getting a lot of those. It's a nice, juicy, steaming pile of you-know-what. That's basically what it is. That's what that award is, uh, the Christian Ponder Memorial. Or it's just an image of a guy fumbling or throwing it in there, throwing a pick six. But uh, Breland, yeah, he's just not been real good, unfortunately. It's it's too bad. I hate picking on a guy, but he's not been good. And he was bitching and moaning about the early touchdown when Seattle just marched down the field on the opening kickoff. Uh, well, after the opening kickoff, the opening possession. Just marched down that field, and I'm like, we're going to lose again as they just marched on the field two two possessions in a row. I thought we were dead. And little did we know, we weren't dead. Um, but Breland just given too much effing space to Metcalf early on. It was like, dude, come on. Uh, he's still got 107 yards in the game. All of a sudden, the DK Metcalf. <clears throat> uh, Ur Urban legend is, my God, it took that long to finally beat Russell Wilson. It took that long... Uh, to finally keep him to like like what how many yards did he have single digit yards for Russell Wilson rushing single digit yards for Russell Wilson running can't believe it can't believe it he certainly looks older he does he's just his, his, his face looks older and it seems like he's aged kind of quickly 
1988. Yeah, yeah, that'd be. Yeah, he's turning 33. He could run for president, but I think I'll pass on that one. I think I will because I think I know how we vote. <laughs> I think I'll pass. Um, I'm just leaving. I'm just messing around with you. But <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it? At the end of the day, he's not running for president. He might make a nice pastor, though, which is good. Uh, just regardless, even though he. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what the heck am I seeing? At least he's a good Christian. That's what I appreciate. I'm glad he's a good Christian. That's a good thing. Um, uh, but with that said, again, urban legend to keep him to seven yards, and also it took, you know, eight attempts to finally beat him. It kicked our butts over and over, and we finally beat him. With that, we'll take a break, and we will return for the ultra-fun segment number two right after this. Not that this segment wasn't fun. Wasn't as emotional, I guess. I'm just kind of more in a chill mode, you know? I'm just kind of chill today, which feels nice because we beat Seattle finally. I'm not dancing on the clouds either because we're one and two. With that said, again, let's get to segment number two after this. And we are back here on Purple Mafia, segment number two of episode 349 of Purple Mafia, 14th season covering the Vikings on here, which has been been a pleasure. It certainly has Green Bay threatening Aaron Rodgers, airhead Aaron Rodgers. Okay, I'm just messing around. San Francisco down 10 to nothing to the Slackers. As, um, well, yeah, we were talking about, oh, we'll be tied for first place if Green Bay loses today. Yeah, we'll be tied for first place, but Green Bay would have the, the lead because of the, the divisional deal. Uh, whoa, what's he mad about? <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, yep. Airhead Rodgers. Beating the team he hates, I'm sure, with the passion because they didn't draft him. What's up with those weird white pants? I like the gold ones, damn it. San Francisco, when they wear their 80s Joe Montana era uniforms, I, I just melt. You know, you, you just, you know, they're... Them and the Chicago Bears. It's those two. They're, that's just 80s to me. And, and the Los Angeles Rams, those classics. I uh, picked up the, an L.A. Uh, on YouTube. They're, it's out there. The entire NFC Championship game on CBS. When John Mann, uh, Pat Summerall and John Mann were on CBS back then. It was just a different, completely different thing. Um, oh, NFC Championship game, Bears and Rams. Boring in terms of the Bears shut them out. But those jerseys, those players. Oh, man. Oh, it's the coolest thing ever. And the... The, 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 the picture quality was freaking awesome for 1985. Yeah, 1985 NFC title game. Of course, it was in January. I believe it was in January by then. 86. Even though things went differently a little bit. Things didn't drag all the way into February. Carolina over Houston Texans. Ugh, Carolina over the Houston Texans on Thursday night football. 24-9. to Not a good game. Yuck. Boring. Another crappy Thursday night game. Carolina's 3-0, and though. Carolina is 3-0. and Good job, Carolina Panthers. They look really good. Um, yep, they beat a crappy team, but that's what you got to do. you got to beat somebody. Somebody called Davis Mills was, was, you know, he was okay for the Houston Texans, but he was nothing special. They couldn't get the ball on the ground, or they couldn't move, in, they couldn't move when they had the ball uh, when they tried to run with it. Dang, and that was Houston. But, of course, they were behind most of the way, and Sam Donald's solid. Not great, though. No touchdown passes in the game, but him and DJ Moore hooked up for 126 yards. Not great accuracy, necessarily, but Sam Donald, he's getting a little better. He's, he's getting a little better. It's a different vibe. And Carolina, and they're 3-0, so good for them. I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. It's not one of those kind of games. Buffalo versus Washington. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this was a Super Bowl, of course. Buffalo getting a little revenge. This was the one in the Dome back in 92. Um, <clears throat> we had one in the U.S. Bank Stadium. Obviously, Patriots in Philadelphia. The hated Eagles beating the Patriots. That was not a nice day. Plus, I was mourning the impending loss of my friend. Oh, man. Because that was when I, I, I that was when the text came, like, he's not going to make it. Neil Natal facing. So that was multiple very depressing things in that day. <sighs> mm, I'm sorry. I had to... <laughs> breathe for a second there. That's, that was just... Mm, 
I'll never ever get that feeling. Uh, man, I did not like the Washington Redskins back then. I kind of like them now. The Washington W's, I guess they are now, until they have an actual name. I wouldn't, I think they should keep the color scheme. And I like the numbers on the helmets, too. Hey, it's cool. It looks like the really old days, doesn't it? I think it's cool. It looks, I like the color scheme. That's why I'm kind of a bigger fan of them now with, you know, it's just interesting. And Tyler Heineke, what a nice game. You know, he's, he's clutch. He's, he's a hard worker and all that. Uh, this was week two, though, when he actually had the good game against the Giants. Unfortunately, the Giants suck. Uh, Buffalo Bills, though, very different story. I wish this was the final score of that game. You know, Thurman Thomas, those guys, man, that was such a great team, and they deserved at least one freaking ring. Just a, a lot like the Vikings way back in the day, especially in that first Super Bowl uh, in both cases. Like, come on, win the freaking game. You know, and, and make your kick, and that, that was what uh, North cut. North, North, yeah, it was North cut, right, for uh, Buffalo missing the kick. That would have won the Super Bowl for them. And, of course, the Vikings just falling on their face against a far inferior Kansas City team in the Super Bowl four. Shut up, Joey. 43-21 to win for Buffalo over Washington. Sorry, I'm just babbling too much. Tyler Heineke, I don't know. Well, he's, he's going to get the interceptions. He's not that spectacular. He has moments, but he's not that great always either. Hooking up with Antonio Gibson, though, with a 73-yard play catch and scamper type of situation. Heineke's a solid, he's a really nice backup quarterback. Uh, I'll admit that. He's he's fine. He's easy to root for. But Josh Allen, I mean, whoa. Whoa. And you know, Washington's defense is actually really good. It's a really, really good defense. So for Buffalo to do what they did in this game is freaking impressive. <clears throat> 358 yards. Josh Allen, namely, four touchdowns. Whew. And decent completion percentage, about 70. I mean, wow. Cole Beasley, the guy I agree with a little bit on some things. Uh, 11 catches, 98 yards. Didn't get in the end zone. Emmanuel Sanders was the big fantasy pimp in this game, along with, uh, obviously, with Josh Allen, with a couple of touchdowns, 94 yards. Our buddy Diggs, a couple of incompletions, but six overall catches for 62 yards. Again, nothing off the charts, but just generally speaking, Josh Allen was uh, awesome. Buffalo defense was solid, forcing multiple turnovers versus Tyler Heineke, and that certainly helped. Uh, Josh Allen really getting things going early, though. That 21 nothing lead, those three touchdown passes. Kind of reminds me of Kirk Cousins today with those three touchdown passes. <laughs> it was pretty good. Um, Allen, though, absolutely great, obviously. Absolutely awesome. <clears throat> there were no pick sixes or anything, but it uh, certainly those turnovers certainly did not hurt, uh, help the Washington W's in today's game. So that's unfortunate there. Chicago-Cleveland will get to that later, much, much later. In fact, that will be the very last game of this segment. Detroit-Baltimore, that's got to wait as well. NFC North roundup. And unfortunately, the other one is 10 nothing Slackers versus San Francisco. Indianapolis and Tennessee, the Colts, they're done, man. They're done. They're 0-3. 0-3 is like a, like a nail in the coffin just about. Was it one team in 20 years now has made the postseason since then? And one of the four teams in the last X amount, I can't remember how many years it's been. Is it 30 or 40 years? One of them was the San Diego Superchargers, 92 when I first really started watching football, for real, like full-time, like really watching football, not casually. Chargers started 0-4, they finished 11-5, and and they lost the first, and the, they, had the, they earned a first-round bye after going 11-1 and after that, and they lost right away. Ugh, I remember being just devastated. I'm pretty sure it was the Buffalo Bills. It wasn't the Dolphins, so it had to be the Bills. The Dolphins were the other uh, um, team with the bye. They had a home field advantage over the Buffalo Bills. and Well, they didn't win that game either. Buffalo, a nice underdog story getting back to the Super Bowl and got absolutely demolished by Dallas, like 55 to whatever it was, 55-21 or some crap. I hated it. I hate the Cowboys with a passion. <clears throat> that was depressing. I fell asleep during that game because it was so boring. And I'm sure Colts fans are starting to fall asleep, too. We got Carson Wentz. We got the number two pick in the, in the what was it, the 2017 draft? This guy's going to be a stud. Or is it 16, whatever year it was? He's, he's not good anymore. I don't know. Whatever it was, he's lost his mojo, man. Tennessee's defense is good, though, to be fair. They're, they're really frustrating to play against. They're really old school. Like, good defense, great running game. Um, even Tannehill rushed for 56 yards. How about that in the game? Three touchdowns. He turned the ball over quite a bit, which you think would help because Indianapolis has a really good defense. 
they're a pain in the ass to play. Uh, very pain in the ass team to play against, but um, just they just couldn't get anything going offensively. Naheem Heinz luckily got in the end zone. He's one of my favorites. I always imagined him as a nice special teamer for Minnesota, but they don't even use him on special teams there. He's just kind of a third down back, situational back over there in Indianapolis. Anderson Dejo, Xavier Rhodes. You know, it's a good defense. It's just funny to imagine those two guys there. Guys. I, would, I don't want to call them clowns, but, well, I don't know. They didn't throw in Xavier, was, uh, Xavier Rhodes' excuse me, direction in the whole game. Or at least uh, when they did, the passes weren't completed. They didn't throw it in his direction most of the game, though. Uh, kind of like, uh, you know, he's just one of those older guys that they respect. Even though he was not good here, he's been a lot better over in Indi- Indianapolis so far. But they're 0-3, and yeah, it doesn't look good. Tennessee looks solid, 2-1 and record. I'm still strongly considering them a postseason team. Obviously, very, you know, they just have that solid overall game. Uh, good uh, uh, quarterback that knows how to win. And you got to love what he can do out there, generally speaking. Man, Carson Wentz just, ugh. He, he's depressing, man. He's depressing. He can't hang on to the ball. It was against the Rams last week. And then today, just not just a whole lot of nothing. It's depressing. It, it sucks. 37 attempts and 19 completions. That That's bogus, man. That's bad. Bogus. Let's move on quickly as I can. Oh, San Diego Superchargers, Los Angeles Superchargers. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs at home. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead Stadium, and Patrick Mahomes played the whole game. Yes, he did. Multiple INTs, a San Diego Supercharger defense getting the job done, along with, well, he was a, he was a very high pick in the draft, was a number two overall. Justin Herbert, Four touchdowns, great game. Didn't even get to 300 yards, but still completed what he needed to down the stretch. What an awesome game. Mike Williams exploded on the scene here in this one. 122 yards, two touchdowns. Again, it's nice to have some solid, some good weapons along with a great weapon. And Mike Williams, Jared Cook's a nice tight end as well. Wow, that San Diego team is getting, I keep calling them San Diego, Los Angeles Chargers. Just, I don't know, it's weird, but whatever they are. (laughs) <laughs> Whatever they are, maybe they're going to be the better team in L.A. long term. They probably will be if Justin Herbert keeps uh, going up the way he has been. Travis Kelsey, huge in the game, but couldn't get in the end zone. And it just they just couldn't get it done in the end. They just couldn't get it done. The Chiefs thought they had it, but then the Chargers would kind of hang on and hang on and look like the Chiefs had something going. The Chargers were able to tie it up super late. And then it was a... Uh, and then they were able to get the game-winning drive where the uh, Chargers getting the ball back from Patrick Mahomes. Just a huge, huge moment there. And Justin Herbert was able to complete the touchdown. Uh, Vis- Visciano missed the pay- point, uh, the extra point, which is crazy, but the Chargers defense still held the held things strong. Huh? 36, 36 seconds remaining. The Super Chargers beat the Chiefs. But I'm not going to forget, though, the year Kansas City won the Super Bowl. They didn't exactly start well that year. And I remember uh, Mr. Mahomes missing a few games with a knee injury as well in that game, or in that season. In fact, they beat us without Patrick Mahomes that year, if I remember correctly. That was some bull crap. <laughs> that really was. It was what, what was it, Moore? That was the quarterback's name? Hey, it's, good. it's nice to have a good backup, but it was still BS. Mac Jones, what happened? What happened, Mac Jones? Man, he'd been, he was off to a fantastic start. Not great numbers, but just smart, solid, getting the job done. And then, well, things took a turn for the worse today. Three interceptions for him. Trying a little, trying to do a little bit too much here. Again, 51 attempts. Jameis Winston, much, much better game today than last week. He got a huge mess a week ago. Absolutely getting thrumped. Um, but a couple of touchdowns in today's game. Sorry for the smacking. I know at least one guy from North Carolina hates it, if he's still listening. But a solid, easy win for the Saints, generally speaking. They kind of, they just kind of got the job done. Boring overall game, I would have to say. Generally speaking, if you didn't have any uh, horse in the race, so to speak, 28-13 to over New England in New England. In Foxborough. No, Gillette Stadium. Yeah, that is Foxborough, Massachusetts. I do believe. Atlanta versus the New York Giants. (sighs) <sighs> well, the, the Falcons finally won a game, and the Giants didn't. They're 0-3, and they still stink. 14-10 to 
Nope, 17 to 14. I don't know. It's just yeah, da- mediocre quarterback Daniel Jones versus guy who was an MVP who isn't anymore, that kind of thing. Cordero Patterson, big numbers. I'm happy for him. 82 yards, and they finally got a win, but I don't know what else to say. Like, who cares? You know? <laughs> who cares? It's one of those games where it's like, okay, somebody had to win. At least both defenses got um, like about three sacks in the game, so good for those guys, generally speaking. Uh, neither one of these defenses is that good either. That's just that's why it's like seventeen to fourteen, huh? Wow, that's that's great. Cincinnati Bungles, who are actually a decent football team, aren't they? They're actually decent. They're two and one. They beat the Vikings. They better be good, right? Well, they beat the Vikings and they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers too. They beat the Steelers. Remember who beat the Bills in the season opener like badly in Buffalo? Now they're one and two. 24 to 10 versus their division rival Cincinnati Bengals, who just might be a playoff threat as the season progresses. Joe Burrow was absolutely great in the few attempts he made. Didn't really have the ball that much in this game. Kind of crazy. Pittsburgh had the ball the whole game, and they couldn't get anything going. They just stunk. I mean, they just stunk. Joe Burrow did have one interception, but he was just absolutely clutch when he needed to be. Three touchdown passes, and my God, Ben Roethlisberger, uh, if his, I don't know, there, there's a reason why he might have a shoulder problem, because like, 58 attempts and out of the whole game, he was just mediocre at best. <clears throat> and they're missing, obviously, some, some, some talented guys. Claypool is absolutely awesome. Najee Harris, 14 catches. He was targeted 19 times. Najee Harris, who's been bursting on the scene, and he's the guy who's had more possessions than anybody in the NFL here, more, you know, touches, per se, than anybody in the NFL outside of a quarterback. Duh, obviously, but he's throwing the ball. Uh, he's, yep, that was what they were talking about before today's game. And, well, 14 catches and 14 rushes, that's cute. Only 40 yards on the rush. Yeah, not, nothing special there. Roethlisberger, just retire, okay? Just just retire. I mean, seriously, he's he's finished. He's He's done. You know, or suit up for the whoever's. I don't know. Like back in the day, like old washed up quarterbacks used to play for an awful Saints team or something. Like Wade Wilson would play for the Saints. Tommy Kramer played for the Saints. Uh, <clears throat> Jim Everett was decent for them for a couple week, a couple years. He was decent. He was better with the Rams though. Okay, but um, wow, what well, good good on Cincinnati. They're two and one. Eli Apple, of course, had seven tackles in the game. You know what that means? They were targeting him. And the ball was caught. He doesn't have seven. I mean, okay, occasionally a, a cornerback might come up and tackle, a, might make a tackle on a run play as well, or even get a sack. But Eli Apple, I think they were targeting him. <laughs> I, I really do. Arizona Super Cardinals, they're only in second place despite a 3 0 record because the NFC West is very tough. And they're playing the awful Jacksonville Jaguars, who are still are awful. You could have the number one pick in the draft. And Arizona wasn't good right out of the gate either with uh, Kyler Murray, even though he was. He got off to a slightly better start. Trevor Lawrence has got to have like seven or eight interceptions already. He's not off to a good start. He's got some weapons around him, but I don't know. The vibe there just isn't good. Marvin Jones Jr. is a decent receiver. James Robinson's one of those running backs who can kind of do a little bit of everything. I mean, it's easy to like him. <clears throat> Philip Dorsett the second. Wow. <laughs> not a whole lot going on there, though. Christian Kirk, A.J. Green. Remember Christian Kirk last week? A.J. Green was really, had a huge game in this one. <clears throat> DeAndre Hopkins has definitely been pushed down a bit. And Max Williams didn't have the big numbers this week either. <clears throat> but Arizona 3-0 and despite a not very great game by Kyler Murray. Big numbers, but not not much for the touchdowns necessarily. And the completion percentage is kind of meh in the game, I would have to say. Denver versus the New York Jets. MVP Teddy Bridgewater, the 3-0 and Denver Broncos beat the Jets. They beat the Jets. The J-E, the just end the season Jets. Zach Wilson struggling just like Darnold so far. I still feel better about him than Darnold, but I don't know. Teddy Bridgewater, you know, kind of like Kyler Murray without the interception today. Didn't have the touchdowns, but got had a decent overall game. Completed the passes where he needed to. And they beat a bad team, and he didn't get hurt. That's good. And I'm not. It's not because I'm like, oh God, Teddy's going to get hurt. No, it's just in a game, in a me, in a game when you're just, you know, the other team sucks so bad. You're just praying to God you don't have some kind of freak injury of of any kind. And thankfully they didn't. And nice to see Teddy with that C on his chest. 
He would have had it here, but unfortunately he didn't get the chance. Corlin Sutton, again, a big factor. Well, not really, not as much as last week. Tim Patrick was the main star as the receivers of 98 yards today, catching all five targets coming his direction. I like the vibe in Denver. I do. I like the vibe in Denver, and, you know, they're going to keep saying, oh, you never played anybody, you didn't play anybody, who cares, this is bull crap. it doesn't mean anything. Eventually, it doesn't matter. If you're, you know, 10-2 and two or something, you're 10-2. and two. I mean, you got to beat teams that are inferior. And you just might show up and beat teams that are, you just might show up and beat teams that are better or, or on par with you as well, because your confidence level is going to be a lot higher if you're 10 and 2 instead of you're like, you know, 5, 5 and 7, 5 and whatever the heck, you know, that kind of situation. So obviously, impressive start for Denver, and I'm happy for them. First place in the AFC West ahead of the hated Kansas City Chiefs. Not bad. Lagos, 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 Lagos Vegas Raiders are 3-0 and as well. Las Vegas Raiders tied with Denver, but Denver is the upper hand at the moment. I'm happy about that. They beat the Dolphins barely. Miami Dolphins 1-2 and on the season. Ugh, I don't know what to think about the Dolphins. The Raiders are kind of messing around. I kind of like Jacoby Brissett, but I liked it better with the Colts. Who the heck do they have, Miami? It's just a weird game. It's just a weird game. Derek Carr always clutch when he needs to be. He gets the team down the field, and they're able to finally win the game in overtime, despite a, it's, uh, some insane moments here in this game, leading to the win. Daniel Carlson missed an extra point, but he made all three of his kicks. Jason Sanders made two, but I know there was a massive kick. Uh, I thought there was. No, it was just a 50-yarder. I thought there was like some 60-yard kick in this game. Just a 50-yarder. Well, they tied it up. Um, Daniel Carlson kicked the field goal to uh, put the uh, the uh, Raiders ahead. Not to win, but ahead in overtime. This is this is about the most dramatic an overtime game can be. Where all, you, all field goal kickers made their kicks. You got down the field. You <laughs> make the kick. So you have the lead. The other team is able to tie it up with their field goal instead of win the game with a touchdown. And then now <laughs> the other team in, in uh, Oakland's case, Oakland, Las Vegas's case, can win the game with a field goal. They do get them down the field with only three seconds remaining and Carlson with a chip shot, 23-yarder. I, I don't think this has really happened yet since the rule change. That's kind of cool. And if it has, I apologize. But it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool how it was a bit of a back-and-forth situation. Between the two kickers, that's kind of cool. Yep, Carlson made a 50-yarder along the way as well, and he did miss one, unfortunately. And Elandon Roberts intercepted uh, Derek Carr, 85-yard pick six in the game as well for the Miami Dolphins. Let's keep moving. I can only go on so long. A lot of people believe this is the NFC Championship game. I think I had Tampa and Green Bay. Boy, I, or did I have the Rams? I don't even remember. I'm going to have to listen back to the season preview, or at least that part of it. I don't want to listen to the whole show, necessarily. 34-24, um, to 24, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get their first loss of the season, and the Rams now, this could matter, obviously, for home field advantage, and that first-round buy, which only the first-place team gets, the first-place team in the conference gets nowadays. 3-0 record for the Los Angeles Rams. Now they have played somebody. You know, they played Detroit, and they barely beat them, and they barely won last week. It was not that impressive. Stafford way better this week than he has been. Brady just unbelievable as well. Both quarterbacks going against really, really, really good defenses. And look at the numbers. They're just unbelievable. And plus the fact that both quarterbacks were able to spread the ball around to the level they were, especially Brady. It's a crying shame, actually, that Tampa didn't win for that reason. But they just got too far behind, and there was just not enough time left for the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks to catch up. I mean, 31-14, 34-17, 28-14. It's just too much. 21-7 even. That's a that's a big deal. You're down 21-7 at the beginning of the second half. It's just not good. That's a big deal, man. That's a big deal. 75-yard play to Deshaun Jackson. It's not fun. It's not fun to have to catch up like that. Multiple touchdowns and such. Um, Tom Brady led the Bucks in rushing with three rushes and 14 yards, and he got in the end zone. Only one touchdown pass, but 41 per 41 completions to 55 attempts. That is unbelievable. 432 yards 
Oh, I hope there isn't. I hope there isn't a day we find out he's like a Lance Armstrong, or all, all this time there's been some kind of thing, you know, that's kept him going forever. I pray that's not the case, <clears throat> because if it isn't, wow, it's just it's unbelievable what Brady's doing. It's unbelievable. Forty-three years old, forty-four years old, <laughs> and he's just that good still. And and again, do you realize how good this Rams defense is? Do you know how good the Rams defense is? Do you know how good the Bucks defense is when you see what Matthew Stafford did? He had nearly a perfect game with four touchdown passes in the game. Gets big play to Deshaun Jackson, 75-yard play. Two touchdowns to Cooper Cup, who's the best tight end in the league, I think. I think he's better than Travis Kelsey right now. I mean, he is just unbelievable. If you got him in fantasy, you're dancing on the clouds. As long as you have some other decent players around Cooper Cup. Woo! You got yourself a championship caliber club. Green Bay still ahead, 10 to nothing, And they're in the red zone pushing. Looks like they just fumbled, but out of bounds. Green Bay just fumbled with a lot of bounds. I didn't see the player. Are they going for it on fourth and one, huh? Fourth and one? Is it at the goal? Yeah, it's at the goal line. Going for it. Oh, no, the first down. They're at the three. It's like the two and a half yard line, and they get a first down with one yard. And it's thrown away, and San Francisco takes over at the three yard line. Well, well, that would have put San Francisco in a really tough position. 17 nothing like that. And Rodgers has that same look on his face like, really? Really? Is this for real? Are you kidding me? Yep, we're not kidding. Well, that's the NFC North. Green Bay, San Francisco. Green Bay still ahead, but they almost had a chance to really uh, happy in the driver's seat there. Didn't work out. Detroit, Baltimore. This was the game with the big field goal. Okay, yeah. This is what threw me off. I thought it was Miami for some reason. No, it was a back-and-forth dramatic game. It was Justin Tucker. Oh, my God. 66-yard kick where it hit the upright at the bottom and rolled over for the win. 66-yard field goal for Justin Tucker after a back-and-forth game, and that's Detroit football, unfortunately. They played very well in the game. I can't imagine how that fan base feels right now. Every game they've played has been pretty competitive for the most part. I mean, obviously, they had to come back big time against San Francisco. Um recently, but, and it, and it just didn't work out. It's a damn shame. I think Jared Goff's been adequate for Detroit. I mean, he's he's okay. And I was talking about I'd rather have Jared Goff than Kirk Cousins. I know. You're probably like, whatever, Joey. Well, it's a little bit cheaper, and he's a lot younger. That's the one thing. But I, I don't know. What, whatever, right? Lamar Jackson was just, he was like Lamar Jackson. <laughs> just kind of all over the place. He's always going to have a turnover in the game. His completion percentage is always going to be like in the 50s. But he'll get a he'll he'll make the big plays here and there, and he'll get the big runs. He'll make he's accurate when he needs to be. That's what's interesting about Lamar Jackson. Uh, they're now two and one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the Raiders beat them, and then they've been pretty solid since then. Second place in a very good NFC North suddenly with Cincinnati and Cleveland, uh, and Baltimore all kind of battling, and Pittsburgh is going to be riding the pine. I hope I picked them last. I hope I did. I think I did, but I don't know. Uh, looked like Detroit was finally going to get a win and again and, and beat Baltimore, which would have been super impressive. But it just wasn't meant to be. It just wasn't golf. You know, again, decent game, but he didn't get in the end zone once. Didn't get any passes in the end zone anyway. Uh, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, they're, they're playing from behind most of the way. Nobody really stood out this game. Just the fact they were actually ahead against Baltimore was kind of cool. Their defense was decent when it needed to be again four sacks and Lamar Jackson's actually pretty solid but Baltimore uh, ended up being clutch when it mattered and Justin Tucker is the best kicker in the world 66 yard field goal <laughs> you're not hearing the that's bullshit like uh, was it Cundiff, David Cundiff in the in January 2012 after the 2011 season when you saw Cundiff miss a 37 yarder to force overtime versus the, pa the Patriots and it was wide, whatever. It was wide left, I believe. And you can clearly read uh, John Harbaugh's lips saying, that's bullshit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are, I guess you could say, the two most, uh, the two longest tenured coaches in the NFL right now with uh, Bill Belichick and uh, John Harbaugh. It's got to be, right? Bill Belichick's been there since 2000, 2000, if I remember correctly, from the Jets. It was a weird trade. <laughs> Jeez, can you imagine that? <laughs> that's unbelievable. Um, and then John Harbaugh's been in Baltimore forever as well. Pretty cool, pretty cool. 
pretty damn cool. Detroit, again, unable to get the win. And now you get Cleveland and Chicago. The Bears look like crap. The offense still sucks. That Cleveland's defense is very dangerous, and that's who we're playing next week. Cleveland defense looks awesome. Baker Mayfield, oh, he's just he's just okay. But they made Justin Fields look like a rookie. Like a rookie who was a deer in the headlights, and the Bears couldn't do anything in the whole game. Uh, what did Justin Fields complete? Just above 25% of his passes. It was that bad. 6 of 20. 68 yards, just nothing, just just nothing there, just nothing. They couldn't run the ball, they couldn't throw the ball, they couldn't do anything. Oh, they couldn't do jack squat. Miles Garrett, only four and a half sacks in the game, just four and a half for Miles Garrett. Two for Jadavian Clowney, Malik Jackson with a half sack, Takaris McKinley with a half sack, Ugh. Ronnie Harrison Jr. with a full sack, of course. Jeremiah Owaswo Karamoa. That was a mouthful. Well, he also he also threw in a half sack in the game. Oh, just four and a half though for Garrett. You know, so six and a half total for Jaladinian Clowney, Clowney and Miles Garrett in the game. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yes, good, good, good grief! Good, good God! It doesn't feel it's supposed to be kind of mobile. He was sacked nine times in the game. The Bears' offensive line just went to sleep. They just sucked, and that Cleveland defensive line, they play like that. Well, there you go. That's how Tampa won the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, that other other than obviously having the super clutch greatest quarterback ever, um, that Tampa defense was absolutely great, and they were able to, you know, constantly rush and harass Patrick Mahomes. It certainly didn't help having a backup left tackle in because of the injury. Uh, earlier, and also the fact Mahomes was playing on an injured toe. Just imagine that combination. Ooh-wee. Uh, that couldn't have been fun. But uh, Cleveland obviously has lots of weapons on offense with a quarterback that's not reliable. As good as he is supposed to be, he's not reliable. He's above average, and that's about it. And that's too bad. That's the thing. A lot of these number one overall picks, that's usually what they end up being half of the time. We'll see. Um, Baker Mayfield wasn't that highly touted, was he? He just happened to go number one. And I remember some Cleveland people being like, oh, well, or just NFL fans. Odell Beckham Jr. led the team in, in uh, overall yards. Kareem Hunt, a nice, valuable weapon throughout the game. I remember seeing him, the fantasy ratings. Not that I'm that into it, but I eat in the same place almost every Sunday. And they happen to have fantasy f uh, football like conversation going up there. And Kareem Hunt was ranked like 39th, I think, for running backs today. For today's, for today, generally speaking. 39th. Doesn't look like 39th after that. Well, what did he have? 155 total yards and a touchdown? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Only one touchdown, but 155 total yards. That's nothing to sneeze at. You know, uh, not bad. Nick Chubb, again, also good, but didn't get in the end zone. He's usually a bigger end zone threat, where Kareem Hunt's more of the speed guy. And, uh, you know, he can make the catches and, and run and such. He's the more versatile guy. Vikings offensive line is going to have their work cut out for them. That's just all i got to say about that. I mean, they really are. Uh, they played very well. They uh, bottled up Chandler Jones last week, who had five sacks uh, in week one. I believe that was against uh, Tannehill, right, of Tennessee. Five freaking sacks. Five sacks. Five sacks. That's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. And... What else was there? Yep, you had the five sacks. But then uh, but, uh, you know, we bottled them up and had nothing. And then we still didn't end up winning the game, even though we played way better. The Vikings played way better, but the defense couldn't stop anybody. And the, But despite all of that bull crap, we still were right in position to win and still didn't win because we blew it with uh, poor execution down the stretch with the kicker missing and this and that. But... Try not to be in that crappy position. Just be ahead by enough and then win the game like the Vikings did today. Again, Vikings play Cleveland. Let's get to the history. 12-4 and four Minnesota is against Cleveland in history. History is definitely on the Vikings side, but we have certainly lost to the Cleveland Browns before. Oof, that was a bad one. I'm looking at it right there. Ooh, wee. We'll come back to that momentarily. Going all the way back to 1965, the Vikings defeated. This was Fran Tarkington when he was super young. Defeated the Browns 27-17. Two years later, Tarkenden was playing for the Giants, and the Vikings lost 14-10. Both games were in Cleveland at the time, so we'd won and lost in Cleveland. That was evened out. Vikings were playing at home 51-3 in 1969. 
November the 9th, 51 to 3. 51 to 3 over the Cleveland Browns that, that year. Cleveland was super good in the early 60s, don't forget. They were the best. They would have been in Super they would have been Super Bowl champions if the Super Bowl existed. They won the NFL title back in the 60s. They were the last Cleveland team to win a championship until the Cavaliers finally did, beating the evil, hated, cocky Warriors a couple years back in 2016. I love that day. Uh, apparently, the NFL, yep, the Vikings played the Cleveland Browns in the NFL championship game in 1970 and won 27-7. Unfortunately, it was not the championship championship like it used to be. The NFL championship game used to mean you're the champion. But then uh, at that point, obviously, the NFL, had, the NFL and AFL had merged together. Wait, nope. Well, yeah, they were playing against each other. They would uh, The NFL champion would have to play the AFL champion in this fancy new thing called the Super Bowl. It was just the fourth one ever, and the Vikings ended up losing. But it was kind of cool. Uh, we were NFL champions once. We were NFL champions once. But, yeah, unfortunately, you got to call it Super Bowl champions at that stage to be the world champions, and we weren't. 1973, the Vikings won again. 1975, Vikings won again, 42-10. to 10. I believe Cleveland had not won in Minnesota until 1986. 1986, the Vikings had won six games in a row in between. Again, winning in 1980. Yeah, that was the famous uh, division championship game where the Vikings were going to lose to Cleveland in that game, and that was the uh, the miracle play. Tommy Kramer and Ahmad Rashad, that was the miracle game where the Vikings won the division and didn't do anything much after that. Actually, I think we I think we played Philadelphia in a big playoff game a few weeks later, but it didn't matter. We ended up losing, not going uh, far enough, unfortunately, that year. Philly, I think, got to the Super Bowl and lost to the Raiders. No, Steelers in the All-Pennsylvania Bowl. Or was that 79? It was one of the two. Um, 83, a Viking team that, again, I, I just, you don't think much about the 83 Vikings, I suppose. Vikings won that one, and then we lost in 86 in the Dome. It was the first ever loss at home to Cleveland, 23-10, to 10, uh, to 20, pardon me. And then a loss in overtime many years later, 1989. Very frustrating day there. The the, uh, the curse fest in 89 was in early November. So we're coming up on, you know, we're, you know, we're, uh, <laughs> the 32-year anniversary, it'll be, uh, where Jerry Burns went off and had like 51 F-bombs in one press conference. Not a joke. He did. Um, like he's won four in a row uh, from 89 all the way up to 2009. We didn't play them that often anymore. 92, I still remember that game. It was a lot of fun. I think Bill Belichick had just gotten there. Very fun day in the Dome. I remember the, uh, was it Todd Scott intercepted Bernie Kosar late in the game, and the Vikings ended up winning. That was awesome, 17-13. to 13. 2000, uh, excuse me, 1995, a Cleveland team that was really good the year before wasn't nearly as good. The Vikings won easily in that game. Unfortunately, we still missed the playoffs that year. 2005, very impressive. Uh, it was a fun run for the Vikings late in the season with Brad Johnson, 24-12 to victory. 2009, the season opener where Adrian Peterson got in the end zone three times, and he was definitely the most valuable player of that game. He was the Targington Award winner when the Targington Award didn't exist yet, if I remember correctly. It, it did not. Not until like 2012, 13-ish, sometime around then, or 14. I can't remember what year it was. But 34-20 to win over Cleveland. A lot of people were worried, like, that offensive line isn't going to hold up and Brett Favre's going to be destroyed. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, they, they were okay. <laughs> 2013, Chazinski, Coach Chazinski was only there for one year. And that was the double fake where uh, Mike Prefer looked like a moron. And, I don't know, I like our current special teams coach better than Prefer or uh, whatever that guy's name is now. Maloof. Uh, Maloof the last year, the couple of years here. Uh, Prefer overrated, I think. Uh, obviously, you know, they were faked twice. Special teams, the, the kickers faked the Vikings twice, and they got the first down twice in Cleveland, and they ended up beating us 31-27. to Vikings were 0-3 in that game, and that was the be- true beginning of the end of Christian Ponder's career in the NFL. He looked like crap. Uh, 0-3. Vikings were dead at that point in a lot of people's opinions, and they were. That was a terrible season, and uh, Frazier among everyone else, was let go. 2017, most recently, the Vikings rolled all over a Browns team that was not good at all. I barely remember that game. 33-16, October the 29th, a very easy win for Minnesota over a Cleveland team. And now we're finally playing them again four whole years later at the beginning of October here as we move forward. 12-4 all-time. I think 
boy, it's a very damn good Cleveland team. There's no question about that. They're dangerous. That defensive line is scary. I loved what I saw today, though. I, I really loved what I saw. A lot of people could believe in the momentum here and that the fact that Baker Mayfield isn't going to kill anybody. He's, he's really not. Uh, you know, uh, just, <laughs> Kirk Cousins is a lot more dangerous than Justin Fields at this stage, and he's less likely to make rookie mistakes, this and that. Something about this Clint Kubiak offense and the way they have Kirk Cousins get rid of the ball and we're utilizing the... Uh, uh, we're, we're utilizing play action a lot more than we have in the past, which is really good because that's Kirk Cousins' strength. The Vikings' chances of winning this game are a lot higher than people might want to believe, but it really, it really, it's really hinging on the trenches here. If that offensive line can hold up like they have been, the Vikings should win the game. If it's anything like it was today with nine sacks or eight sacks or even six, I think I think the Vikings are in big trouble. I do. Obviously, they have a ton of dangerous weapons. Cleveland's going to score a lot of points as long as, if, if, unless the Vikings pass rush is able to get to Baker Mayfield on a regular basis and cause trouble and wreak havoc. Because if Baker Mayfield is able to get rid of the ball and accurately complete the play and doesn't make a stupid mistake, which he did not do today, by the way. He did not have an interception. Good for him. Did not fumble the ball. If he's able to protect the football, Cleveland should win soundly, which would be very frustrating. Cleveland will win soundly if they're able to see it, it really it really hinges on the trenches here both sides like what defensive line is going to is going to dominate in this game is the Vegas defensive line going to get to Baker Mayfield and just mess him up or is that Cleveland uh, defensive line going to get to our quarterback and mess him up both quarterbacks are not you know Tom Brady they're not <laughs> you know Patrick Mahomes they're they're decent quarterbacks obviously upper half of the league with nice weapons around them. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, I believe there's one more. Is it Landry, right? Is he still there? He should be, but he's not showing up. Maybe he's been hurt or something, or he left. I'm, I'm blanking on that one. I apologize. But um, definitely lots of weapons there in Cleveland. And, of course, Minnesota, we have Justin Jefferson. We have Adam Thielen. We have Cook if he comes back. We still have Madison, too. Madison's a weapon. He can catch and go, too. He absolutely can. Um... Cleveland has been pretty solid against the run thus far. Generally speaking, I'd have to say they've been good against the run. It's a very good defensive line in Cleveland, so that's the thing. I think you're more likely to beat Cleveland in the air if you can get rid of the ball, but I would say Cleveland should be favored in this game, and obviously Stefanski has a pretty good idea what he can do against this defense. He was here forever, going all the way back to 2006. Don't forget that. Um, kind of like a just kind of a behind the scenes guy and he quietly quietly worked his way up and he's one of the better young coaches in the league now with the Cleveland Browns all these years later uh, came in at a really 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 young age of course with uh, Brad Childress and stuck around all the way until last year when he first started with Cleveland and was coach of the year with them so definitely intriguing thought there this is a really tough game to predict it, it really is the home field should help the Vikings. It should. Absolutely should help. It's a really good vibe at home. I'm going to step out in faith and believe the Vikings can beat the Cleveland Browns. They're going to have enough chances in this game. Maybe the crowd can be a factor to mess up uh, Baker Mayfield a bit because he's not a mentally strong guy. That's the one thing that can beat him. He's better than people say, but still, he's not the most mentally strong guy. He's not a franchise quarterback. He's just not. I, he's Baker's chocolate. He ain't milk chocolate, right? Okay, I'm just kidding. He's not dark chocolate either. He's just Baker's chocolate. So we'll have to wait and see on this one. But I'm going to step out in faith. I do feel it will be a fairly high-scoring game, kind of similar to today. Uh, to today. I actually think it'll be higher. I think there's going to be multiple stacks. I think there's going to be a lot of stacks on both sides as well, which could make things very interesting. Which which quarterback is going to crack first? Which quarterback is going to crack first here? against the talented defensive lines. Uh, and which offensive line is going to crack first as well? Obviously, Cleveland's offensive line is pretty decent. That's the one thing. So, if the Vikings' offensive line can protect Kirk, the Vikings should be able to win this game. Not fairly easily, but soundly. I mean, something like it, but they, we could win by double digits. I'm going to pick the Vikings to win this game. I'm very scared to do it, but I'm going to pick the Vikings to win, which would be nice, which would then put us at 2-2. Two and two. And 
well, we're kind of heading in a slightly better direction. Maybe we could be three and two going into the bye. We'll see. Um, or four and two, pardon me, somehow, some way with Detroit and uh, Carolina coming up. I don't know what's going to happen with Carolina yet. They're dangerous. I'm going to step out in faith and pick a win for Minnesota, though. 34 to 31. Vikings are able to win the game. Greg Joseph has a field goal late in the game to lead the Vikings to victory. Or just Kirk Cousins leading the team down the field, and the Vikings are clutch when it matters most, or a big clutch stop, whatever it is, but the Vikings are clutch when it matters most, believe it or not. Home, the home field helps in a big way. If we were in Cleveland, I think it would be t- a lot tougher situation for us. That's just obvious at the end of the day, but 34-31 for Minnesota at the end of the day. With that, we'll take a quick break and return for Fan Interaction. We are back here on Purple Mafia, segment number three, fan interaction segment. No call in this week, at least for this show. The other call is for the Freedom of Thought podcast, or at least I'll, I, I believe it will be. I asked for permission first. He said it was a personal call, but it was pretty cool. It's definitely more related to that podcast, Freedom of Thought, that I do. It's more political, but I'll, I'll throw in some sports as well, kind of like connecting sports and politics and Christianity and all that together. It's kind of, again, similar to the God, Sex, and Sin podcast, but my own different, my own point of view. Uh, me and Sebastian are very similar, but not 100%. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, at Purple Mafia Show, at Purple Mafia Show <clears throat> is the Twitter account for this show. So clicking like on some stuff, kind of go back a bit, kind of backtrack. Okay, it's not too many. Not too many. Uh, Purple Mafia episode 348, The Kicker Curse Never Ends. Blah, 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 blah. Retweeted by Tanae Brown, Vince Germano, and Malcolm McSween. Tanae Brown out of... <clears throat> Tanae Brown out of New Zealand. Vince Germano out of Melbourne, Australia. Malcolm out of South, uh, Southern California. Not L.A., but a little bit, yeah, a little bit north of that. Who was saying, Kirk haters can F off. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, he, uh, Kirk... Kirk Cousins has definitely been uh, an underrated player this year. No question about that. Um, I think I got to all these under here. I probably did. Hmm. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Uh, what was I saying? Probably will about. Yeah, it doesn't haunt them. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was true. How it thought. We were hoping that missed extra point didn't haunt the Vikings, and it did. Here we go. We're forwarding up to today. Mad Martin out of Northern Scotland says, Watching the Browns-Bears game, I fear for our O-line. <laughs> fear for our O-line. Cook, Cook better be fit for the Browns game, otherwise we're bleeped. Could be. Could be a huge problem. Uh, again, that O-line, if they're ready to go, well, I hope. And uh, he was saying, oh, the defense can't stop anything, and can we keep up offensively? Luckily, we could. Luckily, our offense was ready to go, and Kirk Cousins was that sharp today. And uh, Russell Wilson... The Vikings defense was able to bend but not break. We'll say it gets Russell Wilson today. Thank God that was the case. It finally happened. We finally beat Russell Wilson. He was saying, I bleep and hope so. It will be difficult to come back from 0-3. Yeah, it'd be really hard. I was saying maybe. Maybe we can keep up. I think I got quiet after this, which is unfortunate. But I guess we both kind of did. We were like, oh boy. It was a very entertaining game. Um, Danae was responding to me when I was saying Russell Wilson is the most annoying player to watch in the history of my life when we play against anybody. Uh, it drives me to a point of pure insanity. Get that mf down. And, yeah, he only got seven yards, and I got that agitated. Just just think about that. Danae says, I don't think this defense can bring anyone down. That's what Danae said. And then Vince Germano responds with, he owns you. Yeah, that didn't feel good thinking that, but, it's, yeah, he owns you. Oh, boy. Mm-mm. Yeah, I was saying, what, rubbing the passer? What is this, flag football? That was beyond pathetic. That was pathetic beyond words. Bleep Russell Wilson. I was so mad. Uh, I was saying, I truly hate Russell Wilson versus the Vikings. It's just obnoxious. Yeah, it's, it's a pain in the butt. I don't hate Russell Wilson in general, just versus the Vikings. I was saying, and versus, well, I don't want them to see them win the Super Bowl again or anything. Mad Martin says, solid performance finally. Without Cook, that O looks far more balanced. Just perhaps the D getting its act together. 
It's an interesting test coming against the Browns. Legit defense next Sunday to take on. RD will have to be better. Yeah, we'll have to match their defense. Uh, it's going to have to be much better. Like, obviously, Cleveland does have some dangerous weapons, like I was saying in segment number two. Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, and of course, you know, Baker Mayfield, when he's good, he's pretty good. And an interesting comparison. Sebastian says, one win changes nothing. Fire Zimmer, get Kirk out, and fire Spielman. I don't completely disagree with that. I, I don't. Uh, it's just, you know, <laughs> finally we feel a little bit decent about something, but I understand. Believe me, I understand. One win doesn't change anything. Heck, they won in 15 Browns, won one game. So, I don't think we're that bad, but uh, yeah, 10 and 6, that 10 and 6, 10 and 7, you know, normally it'd be 10 and 6, or 9 and 7, 10 and 7, 11 and 6, whatever, and you don't get out of the first round, or you just get to the second round and get throttled by somebody who's tougher, like the 49ers were in 2019. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's time to get better. You know, it's kind of like the Chuck Fletcher era with the Wild. In fact, I want to make that comparison right now. <clears throat> As I super quickly just uh, doused a bit of, uh, or just gulped a bit of water here. I apologize. Um, I want to, yeah, the, the comparison for me with Rick Spielman is Chuck Fletcher with the Minnesota Wild. Some hits and some misses. It's just a, a lot of, you know, some hits and a lot of misses, honestly. Uh, Chuck Fletcher did have some decent players throughout the time, and then there were guys you'd hang on to far too long, like Anthony Barr and such. Charlie Coyle with the Wild, Mikhail Granlin. He just hung on to him long. Fletcher was a bit more stubborn, I'd say, than Spielman. Eventually he'd move on. Like, we don't still have Cordero Patterson. We don't still have, you know, this guy, that guy. And then Diggs ended up wanting to leave. See, occasionally you have a really nice hit. See, Stefan Diggs, in a lot of ways, was like the Kirill Kaprizov. Fifth round pick, you would have never thought that. Like, okay, fifth round pick, this guy from Russia, he's kind of talented, but we'll see. And then, like, years years go by, and it's like, whoa, holy crap. And then Stefan Diggs, a couple weeks into the season, this fifth round pick wide receiver just explodes against Detroit. Again, the day Flip Saunders died. October 25th, 2015, it was a very sad day, but a very nice win in Detroit. And then Stefan Diggs looked so freaking positive, and he stayed good the rest of the time. And it was a star being born. It was really cool. Like, can you dig it? All that. It was so much fun. It really was. Truly. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Purple Mafia Show. Facebook.com forward slash Purple Mafia Show. A lot less ranting today. That's probably a good thing, right? We're not ranting as much. But we'll see if we're going right back in that direction next week. I don't know. What if it's another, what if it's another you know... Uh, you know, barn burn in the wrong way. We'll find out. Hopefully things are okay. What the heck is going on? Sorry, there's a weird question there popped up. <laughs> Not for anybody weird, but okay, Purple Mafia episode 348, the curse never ends, blah, 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 on Facebook. The one comment was to Nay Brown out of New Zealand, which is always one of the best of all. He says, great show as always, Joey. I missed the game. Sounds like it was an exciting one, though. Once again, we come undone by a field goal or a point after. That was against uh, Arizona, of course. Thanks for always coming through for us with your passion and unbiased takes. Can always count on you. Can never count on a Vikings kicker, though. <laughs> That's what he says. Yep. Can never count on a Vikings kicker. That's for damn sure, isn't it? Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, well, today he was good. But we'll see. We'll see if it's a if it's a clutch moment. It's nice that he made the kicks he did make today, but uh, to count on yeah to count on any kicker other than Justin Tucker, I guess, not a really particularly good thing. Packers up seventeen nothing. San Francisco finally threatening a little bit. Come on, 49ers. you better score your fifty four seconds remaining in the. Oh, I think he made it in the first half. They have plenty of time. Come on, Jimmy G. Come on, Jimmy G. They're not ready for uh, Atlanta. Lance out there just yet. Trey Lance. They're not ready for him just yet. It's a little too early. Putting Justin Fields in as early as they have in Chicago might be a big mis big mistake, but you know, it doesn't help when the Red Rifle was uh, injured as well. So he needs to stay freaking healthy too. Damn it. But oh well. Not many, nobody's feeling too sorry for the Bears at the moment. Yep, there it is. That's Paul Charchian on Twitter. This was after the Arizona game, of course. Vikings, two game totals. Defense allows 913 yards and 61 points. They put a green check mark. Kicker misses two field goals, extra point, check. Kirk Cousins throws her 595 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Rallies team to come from behind, overtime, and chip shot field goal dry. Viking fans with an angry face. It's Kirk's fault. 
kind of like supporters of somebody, but I'll leave that alone. Um, I won't tell you who. Um, won't tell you, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, the previous guy's fault. Yeah, that. Uh, read between the lines there. Uh, Kirk's fault, though? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, Kirk obviously isn't this perfect quarterback. Tom Brady's not a perfect quarterback. Uh, Kirk obviously has had an unbelievable season. Now he can add, what, how many yards? Yeah, I don't even know anymore. Over 300 today. I think I could pull it up in a second. Eight touchdowns, zero interceptions. Eight touchdowns, zero interceptions for Kirk so far this year. Obviously, nobody's going to throw zero interceptions, but, um, you know, he's having a hell of a season as Kirk Cousins. 323 yards you add there. If I can bring it back up again. So that would make it... Ay, ay, ay. 900 and... <laughs> well, I don't know what's wrong with me. 918 yards. Yep, 918 yards. It in my head. Aren't I good? 918 yards. Whoop, now I went to Twitter. Stupid. 918 yards, 8 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. That's what it is now. And led the Vikings to a fairly solid victory over Seattle today. And of course, again, getting the Vikings in position when Delvin Cook fumbled and getting the Vikings in position when Greg Joseph missed. So, yeah, and we just stood there waiting 37 seconds with 37 seconds left on the clock to just say, screw it, just kick the ball and let's win. And we didn't win. Yeah, that. So we'll keep going. I took a picture of something during the game. This is in the, uh, yep, this is all in the uh, in-game thread. Now I clicked on the picture instead of the actual thread. Apologies, I just, I'm on, I'm on a roll right now. I'm on a roll, you know. Well, all comments. So I guess it is starting with what I had. Justin Jefferson. 101st career reception. Fastest in franchise history in 19 games. So faster than Randy Moss. Yep, he actually burst on the scene even faster than Randy Moss and Percy Harvin. Stefan Diggs obviously wasn't, you know, thrown out there immediately. I was saying the same thing. I hate Russell Wilson against the Vikings. It's a joke. Leland from Iowa says agreed. Let's see if we can get all the comments. Brett McCarthy says get Danzel. <laughs> Let's get Dan Danzel. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, though. Um, get, get him in there other than uh, Danzler. Yeah, get Danzler in there. Was Brett McCarthy out of South Dakota? Mike Dale, Zimmer defense is hot garbage. Mark Dale's from uh, New York State. Brett McCarthy says defense is bad today. Mark Carlson, Iowa, says, well, the first quarter in the bag, just have to get going on D, and luckily they eventually did in the second half. My, them being the Vikings, of course. Mike Dale says our corners can't be as bad as Bashad Breland. I know DK Metcalf is hard to cover, but number one, why is Breland tasked with covering him? And number two, why is he giving him that kind of space slash cushion in the red zone? Damn good question, Mike. Damn good couple questions there. Brett McCarthy was saying unreal. I was like right away they got in the end zone. Gene Sapur says 7 nothing Seahawks. Tony Coleman back again. Tony Coleman rides again. South Dakota says... <laughs> I'm not expecting too much today, especially with Delvin out. I hope they surprise me. Up and uh, yeah, if it's one comment a week, it's more than you know. It's it's a lot better than zero. I really appreciate that. Maybe oh, it looks like there's uh, Tony Coleman's in the post game thread too. Awesome, keep him coming, Tony. I really miss you. I understand you've been busy and all that, but I completely can relate to that. And so high, happy to have you back. Uh, Leland Elberson says ten points, probably not enough with Wilson on there. Oh, I felt that way all the way until there was like zero time on the clock. I'm not even kidding. It's been that big of a nightmare for me with Russell Wilson. And how, who could forget the 2013 NFC title game? That was bull crap, wasn't it? And that was against Green Bay, and, I, and it still annoyed me. Most people were like, aha, Green Bay lost. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't like Seattle either. It was like, pick your poison. This jackass or that jackass. It drove me nuts. I, I hated the Seahawks. And it wasn't like I hated Wilson necessarily, though I hate the drama. I'm a huge Christian, but I hated the drama, the, the crying and stuff. It got to be too much. Dude, enough of the tears of joy. Win the Super Bowl and cry all you want holding the trophy. But, uh, yeah. Dave Hickey was saying, Russ Wilson is one of the biggest misses ever in Vikings draft, other than maybe Patrick Mahomes, and they traded up to get him in the first, I believe. Yep. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Brett McCarthy says, well, just maybe this is what they needed to come home and play. 
Here comes the train. Maybe this is the Vikings this year, if you can hear it. Do you hear that? Hopefully, hopefully that's the Vikings and their offensive line the rest of the season. You, I, you probably could hear that in the distance. Hopefully. Uh, Brett McCarthy they were saying 0-3, oh, here it comes. Yeah, that was when it was like 17-7. to 7. It didn't feel good, did it? It really didn't. Oh, man. Scary. Leland was saying the struggle is real. Brett McCarthy said, Breland can't cover my grandmother. And Gene Shapur said another loss. Brett McCarthy responded with the right. Get to the post-game thread. Get to the post-game thread. Post-game thread. Post-game thread. Post-game thread. Okay, sorry. That couldn't have been. No, it wasn't. I'm clicking on the same damn thing. Oh, it's really small. Bummer, man. Those of you that did, though, thank you so much. And, yep, big one from Mike Dale. Yep, he's good about that. I love it. Oh, it's more than that. It was, I thought it was only four. No, it's like, it's a, it's a different more. It's a, it's a lot more. Uh, Tony Coleman says, they surprised me. I'm glad. Brett McCarthy says, sometimes you need to play at home. <laughs> yep, that'll help next week. I think it will. Gerald String says, a lot of energy at the game today. Crowd was great. Oh, yeah, and Gerald was at the game. Yeah, which is really cool. Scary first quarter, and then 23 unanswered points. Madison, great job filling it for Cook. Don't even know where you could go for a Franny Award. Yep, uh, uh, it was it was Kirk, but yeah, I understand how Madison deserves strong recognition. That's why I gave him a gold-plated uh, uh, runner-up or whatever, a gold-plated uh, uh, honorable mention. Leland Albertson says, Kirk Cousins in this defense in the second half wore down Seattle to give the Vikings their first win of the season. That was a great team win. Dave Vicky says, Vikings got lucky. They didn't get a pass interference on Harry the Hitman. Tanae Brown says, Dave Vicky's Iowa, Leland's Iowa, Gerald's Nebraska. Yep, 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 yep. Tanae Brown, New Zealand, says, man, the defense really stood up in the second half after looking like the 2020 team. Great to see Griffin getting pressure on Russell. Continuously finally got one over Russ. Oh, yes. Kirk was terrific. One of the one of his best games as a Viking. Another fun game to watch. Hashtag Skull. Agree, 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 agree. Mark Carlson, Iowa legend, says, is this the real Kirk Cousins? Kirk Clutch Cousins. Hey, if we can keep the offense on the field like that and wear down a defense like we did today, man, we got something here. And our defense finally woke up. We have what it takes. Every player making every down count. Skull brothers and sisters. Mark from Iowa. Awesome. There's Mike Dale. Fun game to watch. And especially since the, Vi since the Vikings pulled off a win against a team we probably shouldn't have. Pros, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Alexander Madison, Tyler Conklin, Adam Thielen, the Vikings defense in the second half, the offensive line, shocker. Also good to see no mental fragility awards, uh, fragility remnants, pardon me, by Greg Joseph after missing that game-winning field goal attempt last week. Cons, con, just kidding. The Vikings defense in the first half, the first several possessions, the Seahawks basically ran and passed their way through the Vikings defense like shit through a goose. <laughs> Ooh, that was funny. They, however, eventually got their act together. Bashad Breland eventually continues to not seem to be able to up to scratch in the pass defense department. As a result, I fear he wins the Christian Potter Memorial Award. Yeah, you got it <laughs> for this week, at least. That's my vote. You got it. Yep, you got it, Mike. <laughs> you nailed it like... Boom, boom. Okay, I, I can't do a sound effect. I really need to be more ambitious about getting sound effects again. Because I, I love that. It, it makes the show more fun having some extra sound effects. Um, it's just when you lose everything, you get devastated, and it sucks. I lost everything, man. It really sucks. Uh, can the Vikings build on this after claiming a scalp that they really weren't given any prior hope of attaining? Vikings finally stopped Russell Wilson's dominance over them. So, so this, okay, yep, so this win feels pretty good and helps soften the blow of last week's dramatic, heartbreaking loss. Onwards and upwards is the hope from this feel-good victory. I hope so, too. And again, you could tell, again, how chill I was today. It was like, ah, oh, you feel so much better. You feel so much freaking better. It feels good. It really does. Um, boy. And once again, now the challenging thing again. The stars. Where do the stars go? The star of stars. Today you were the star of stars. Oh boy. 
Hmm. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was one person. I want two people to have the gold. Yeah, I keep doing this. It should only be one, though, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it just be one? Shouldn't it just be one, though? <sighs> Boy. Oh, God. Having a hell of a time here. <laughs> it's almost like... Okay, so the gold star today is going to go to... Tanae Brown. Gold plated silver star. And, it's, and he's, that's why it's like it's so damn hard. You know, I, it's like I, I could give it to both of them so easily. You know, but it's like I can't give it every week. To, you know, that's the thing. So easily. You know, uh, Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike Dale, silver star, gold plated silver star, Mike Dale, gold star to Tanae Brown. I mean, it's like you're basically right there and you're basically like legends and all that. So obviously, I don't think anybody's mad at anyone. Um, one more silver star. thought I had somebody. Now my brain's just stopping. <laughs> One more silver star is going to go to uh, good golly. <laughs> One more silver star is going to go to um, Dave Martin. Bronze star. I think I'm going to have two there. Mark Carlson and Brett McCarthy for sure he deserves to be on something. He's got to at least have something. He's he's uh, all help. He's like he's like he's, he's so he keeps up with things throughout the whole game, and I really appreciate. It. I think he doesn't. I think he's great about that, and I love his passion for the game. Obviously, that's why he got in the Hall of Fame like almost right away when he was up for it. Brett McCarthy, yep, Brett McCarthy for sure. So with that. That's pretty much a wrap, generally speaking. It feels like a, yeah, but it's about the same. Usually it's about a half hour, or hour and a half, a little longer. It'd be nice if I could keep it to an even shorter, but it's it's hard. It's too hard to keep it short. There's so many things to say, and then I start kind of going off into something that's football-related or like old-school stories and all that, and I just love that about segment two, but sometimes you're on segment three as well. Um, well, obviously it was a really warm day after freezing yesterday, at least up here. It was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. Yep, it's that weird in-between time of year. Here comes October. Here comes the beautiful leaves. Is it Kirktober time where the Vikings go to 4-2? and two? Will it all be just a big tease? We'll just have to wait and see and find out at the end of the day. Uh, other stuff quickly before I do the final closing thoughts are obviously the contact details. Facebook.com forward slash Purple Mafia Show. At Purple Mafia Show for the Twitter account. The Viget application. V-I-G. And then the other word is it, vig it, just two separate words, V I G, and then I T for it, of course. It's an application on Apple and Google devices. Download it for free, of course. Obviously, it's not gonna, they're not gonna charge anything there. Um, so, social media for sports betters. You can post about your bets and see what others are saying about games. Viget Betting Leagues, a month-long betting competition to see who is the best sports better over the course of a month. And that's got to be a lot of fun during the course of this time of season. Uh, during the course of the season here as we're getting hot and heavy into NFL football. It's fun. And Major League Baseball playoffs coming up. And before you know it, it'll be hockey and basketball as well. It's going to be all over the place, man. Free-to-play sportsbook, bet freak coin, coins, and win real prizes. Betting stats. There's great information available on the Viget like line movement where the public is betting and again this is not real money wagering it is not real money wagering it is like fantasy betting basically and you could use that uh vigid uh like line movement where the public is betting you can use that as a cheat sheet as well if you maybe you do want to place money in something you can just kind of use it as a cheat sheet nothing wrong with having that there really isn't but uh if you're going to join it and they ask for a referral Type in Paladino Live, all one word, Paladino Live, and all this information will be in the show description. Uh, again, if you'd like to write a positive rating on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Audible, I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. I really appreciate all of you that have been kind enough to do that. It's been a little while lately, though, unfortunately. It's been a little bit quiet lately. Uh, the other thing is the audio submission, if you want to have your voice on here, like Gerald did the last few weeks, and... I'm sure he'll have one next week. I'm getting the vibe. It might be still coming any minute now. You never know. <laughs> but it'll go to next week at this point. Um, 
But uh, to be able to do that, and of course, uh, Mark Carlson's called in, Dave Hickey's called in, Sebastian's called in, Brent Jacobson's called in. Anybody out there, maybe some of you that haven't called in before, go ahead and do it. And of course, any of you that I just mentioned, yeah, please do. Please do. Malcolm has called in. Oh, man, those are awesome. Mad Martin, duh. He's one of the, he's like the Hall of Famer for calling, and he's so good. So good. Can't wait to hear that again, because uh, I have a feeling he's, he's going to pop up any day now. Mark, uh, that uh, Dave Martin, obviously he's a busy guy. A lot of us are, a lot of us work our butts off or overwork. It is what it is. But to be able to do that, simply open your uh, free, just open up your smart device. Any of you most likely have a free voice recorder on your smart device. All you got to do is press record, treat it like a phone call, just kind of talk right into it. Then when you're done, hit stop and don't worry about it. If you need, if it needs editing of some sort, just let me know. I'm not going to be that picky and whiny about it. I'm not going to give you a hard time. I'm not going to make fun of you. No, that's just not my style. It's not. Um, as, long as, the, as long as the audio quality is reasonable, it's okay. Uh, I, I am in no position to be complaining about anybody. Uh, so I, I apologize if I've ever been difficult with anybody. I don't think I have, but if I have, I deeply apologize. Because um, that's not who I am at the end of the day. Uh but yes, you you record it, then you send it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. That'll also be in the show description. I will then convert it into an MP3 file thanks to Zomzar.com, who provide a free service because that's a small enough file. If you need a larger file, convert it into something else. Yep, uh, Zomzar.com is the way to go. That's why I'm willing to give them a free plug. With that said, again, hope you're going to have a good week this week. It'll be nice to be back on Nooners. I'm really looking forward to that in a big way. So I won't have to record all the show in one quick bunch. Even though sometimes it's good, I guess, to get more momentum. But it's nice to have a little chill time in between segment one and two, I suppose. And then uh, it feels like you can kind of chill a little bit more in the evening and, and such. I don't know, maybe it's okay, though. I chilled in the afternoon a little bit, too, leading into the game. There's positives and negatives to everything, I suppose. But at the end of the day, uh, again, really appreciate every one of you always. You're the greatest. You really are. And I'm not just saying that. Like some people might just say, you're the best. And then that's all they ever say to you. Or they just give you a thumbs up, and it doesn't mean a damn thing. That, that's, no, I mean, I really sincerely appreciate all of you that have commented on this page and on the Twitter account and have called in and just, I'm sincere about it. I mean it. It's 14, 13, 14 years in, it still means the world to me. It still does, and it'll still mean the world to me 13, 14 years from now if I'm still doing this, which I'm probably going to keep doing podcasts until I can't anymore. Probably going to just keep going keep going, keep going, as much as I might feel like not doing it certain days or whatever, I'm still going to keep going. That's just kind of how I am. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously if we're, <laughs> if the world changes enough that we can't do them anymore, who knows? With that said, hope you have a wonderful week. Take care and talk to you, hopefully with the Vikings continuing to head in the more positive direction rather than where it was heading for a little while.